It's Offside with Hawes and McGuire. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Hey, welcome to uh, the Christmas episode of Offside with Hawes and McGuire. Feliz Navidad, baby. Wow. That's, that's you, man. That's awesome. That's Spanish. Eh? That Is it? Yeah. Joyeux Noël for our French Canadian people. Very nice. Uh, very nice. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, it, what is that? There's got to be some other language. Oh, we want do. an Irish, and uh, I just got it sent to me the other day. I should have memorized it, and I didn't. But it actually well, translates to Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. But yeah. I can't exactly. I believe the either. Irish would put it this way, and yeah. I, 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 I may have the dialect wrong. Yeah. Happy fucking Christmas. Yeah, it's probably something like that. <laughs> something like that. Something. Not to, not to like you know, I, I shouldn't say that. I, but I love the Irish use of the vernacular, the swearing vernacular. Yeah. It's, it's eloquently put. And they yeah. can get away with, there's not a lot of places you can get away with using the C word. Okay. It's true. All the time. And you know what? And with no issue at all. It's, it's, you know. None? None. No. No. I, I swear to God, they're kids four years old using it. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, absolutely. it's green light then. It is. No, it absolutely is. It absolutely is. Okay, so listen, it's Christmas, yeah. so we have a lot of things to talk about, uh, you know, merrily and merrily down the road. But first thing we're going to discuss, only because it's hot off the press, DJ Smith. No longer has a job with the Ottawa Senators, Chris. I think that, uh, uh, my God, everybody and their brother has been waiting for the other skate to drop on, uh, on poor DJ yeah. You know, almost uh, into his fifth season here since he was hired in 2019. Is this his fifth season? Into his fifth, yeah. Really? You, know, you know, through through the COVID years and the disjointedness of it and and all of the discombobulation that he had to uh, he had to endure. Not the least of which was missing the playoffs every year. And I was just wow. Was, you know, texting you with um, with with AJ Jackiebeck, my good buddy, yeah. who's on the radio here in Ottawa. We're going back and forth, and he asked me a question. Could have used it for Ask Liam, actually, but we've got another one involving okay. the Senators as well today to talk about. I don't care where you throw it out. Okay. But, I mean, Jeff Blasio with Detroit, yeah. to my knowledge, is the only coach in NHL history to miss the playoffs six straight years and, like, oh, right. and, and stay on his head. He got let okay. go after the six. Right, okay. So, DJ was, was in his He was getting there. Yeah. Well, yeah. He, was get, he was getting up there. There's a bunch of others that are in that four-season range and change, so... But uh, yeah, man, he's gone. Uh, well, Davis I, Payne, assistant coach as well. Yeah. Pierre Dorian earlier this year. So, you well, know. It's, it's, it is, it, you know what? It is a, it's a new old guard, right? So we've got Jacques Martin, who I got to tell you, I always liked Jacques Martin as a coach. And I think, you know what? The, the only thing is, is he had to open them up offensively, right? But from a, as a defensive team, he had those guys playing well back in the day. So I'm hoping that he can really crack down and, and make these guys accountable defensively. Because that's well, what he will. You he, know. He, he will, despite the fact the last time he coached in Ottawa was 19 years ago. Was it that long ago? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, man. he was fired in 2004. And, you know, went on to obviously continue in the NHL. He's got, he's got Stanley Cup he's rings. got Stanley Cup rings, two in Pittsburgh as an assistant coach. He yeah. would have had one in Colorado as an assistant under Mark Crawford when he came to Ottawa originally in 96, undoubtedly, because yeah. he would have been on the staff, and they yeah. won the Cup that year. And, you know, we did a number of other good things, not the least of which was an eight-year run in Ottawa that should have produced a Stanley Cup. And I think if you exchange yeah. coaches behind the Toronto bench and put Pat Quinn there instead of Jacques Martin, Ottawa wins a Stanley Cup. Not saying that Jacques can't. First of all, I don't think the idea here is to have the Sens. Well, I mean, Sens fans hope so. Yeah. Everyone's going to point to St. Louis in 2018-19, or you're going to point to some other teams that have come up off the map. And and Ottawa, given right now mathematically, 11% chance of making the playoffs. So 11%. yeah, 11% chance as it stands today right. to make the playoffs. So forget about being even a Cup winner. Jacques Martin, to me, Chris, has always been missing a key ingredient. What's that? Well, he, he doesn't understand, in my opinion, has ever fully grasped or understood the physicality that's needed sometimes. When I say that, I mean the violence. And let's not, let's not, let me, let me. Hang just... on a second. Are you purporting violence in sport? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> let me take a step. <laughs> well, you know what? So I'm I, telling I mean... you, sometimes the games get violent. Look what I sent you for yeah, notes but, today. But We're talking about shit that's gone wow. on here in the last two weeks, that's three right. weeks, yep. some of... That, like that this is 
It's a violent game. There's 600 guys out there, alpha males, 32 teams, on any given night that, uh, that don't play anywhere near what generations ago we used to. But having said that, you know, in big business where games matter and bonuses yeah. and playing further and making playoffs and possibly winning cups and things of that nature, all sorts of bad things can still happen on the ice. And you better have a team that can respond other than Brady to Chuck. And Ottawa Which, with Jacques Martin, you telling me 19 years later, look at his track record where he's been. He had the toughest guy in the game in George Larac in Montreal, and he allowed Milan Lucic to go on the ice and end Mike Commissaric's career. He allowed it to happen. Oh, you're going to say, wait a minute, Liam. Commissaric went to Toronto. Bullshit, who cares? It's total crap. He had Larac sitting on the bench, the number one nuclear deterrent in the game. All you have to do is tap him on the shoulder. Go ahead, big boy, take two, five, and ten. Who cares? Who gives a shit? Go out there and rip that guy's head off. What? Well, Lucic doesn't, doesn't want to fight Barack because he's a rookie who's scared. He was right. Barack would have beat his head in. But I mean, you got to answer the piper. You just beat the crap out of Commissaire. That's what Jacques Martin is the head coach. Look, that's more recent than the run in Ottawa, but still a long time ago. It's 11 years ago. Right. But, anyways, listen, Jacques's a good guy, he's a friend. I consider him a friend anyway. I know he chirps me because... Does he? Yeah, he chirps me because of uh, an instant of something. Well, but, no, I'd like to know. I can't say it. Because well, I, 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 I know him. I've met him several times. Mm. And uh, Look, if you walked in your door right now, we'd shake hands, okay? Right. But when when they lost to Toronto in... Um, uh, which One of the early ones of the four out of the five years that they lost. Yeah. I, did a, I did the radio all night. Okay. Okay, I was on... Well, was then OSR 1200. So I did the overnight show, just like JR did for years. I did it too. And I and, uh, took calls all night. Jock, as it turns out, went out of the dressing room and out of the building and drove around for hours listening to the show and listening to me be critical of him, of him. as a head coach. Guess what? Following spring, fall, excuse me, following fall, I run into him in Hull at, at a, an Olympic game. Okay. Olympics. And he, he confronts me. He confronted me, and, he, and this is now months later. Well, good on him, though. Oh, good on him, for yeah, sure. Yeah. No, he came right up to me. Why, why, why wouldn't he? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm no Bob McKenzie. or It doesn't matter. I was on the air. It was mainstream. Yeah. I, he said things, I said things he didn't like, so he confronted me. That's fine. So he comes up, and he says, ah, you know, I uh, heard what you said, this and that. He said, do you not think if I had had Shane Corson instead of Magnus Arvidsson, and like you were alluding to, that this and this would have happened? I said, you know what, Jacques? No, I, I don't. Because Shane Corson would have taken a penalty in the first period that you would have been pissed off about, you would not have been happy about, and you would have sat his ass, or you would have changed his ice time, because you were turned the other cheek, Jacques Martin. And in the playoffs then, Chris, and in the playoffs now, if you want to win, if you want to go to the Stanley, what did Florida do last year? Well, yeah, they put it. They ran that. everybody over. They yeah. ran out of bodies that were healthy enough to give Vegas any type of real competence. Because, and you know what, Vegas was just licking their lips anyway. Yeah. They had eight or nine guys. I'm not talking about New York Islanders early 1980s who were eight or nine guys that came right out of Pier Six fight every single night. This is the 2022, 2023 kinder, gentler NHL. But you still have moments. Yeah. Where you gotta get dirty, you gotta get busy, you gotta drop the gloves and get after it. You gotta show physicality. I don't think Jacques has that component. Well, there do you go. think? Okay, so let's just move on from that because he's just the interim head coach. Yeah. Until Alfie. Bottom takes line, over it, as oh, Alfie. Head coach. Alfie could. Well, listen, if Marty Saint Louis can have some, whatever it's success. Marty Saint Louis success in Montreal. I'm is, just gonna say you gotta kind of listen. Montreal Canadiens last year improved by 13 points. Right now, they're on, as it is, 30 games in. They're on pace for improving by a further 17 or 18 points. Yeah. I predicted a, a 14 or 15 point improvement. That's before they lost Doc for the year and have suffered some other injuries, like all teams have. Right. So I still expected Montreal. So we'll see. There's lots of games to go. They got 52 games to play. Having said that, good point by you. If Marty's doing it, why can't Alfie? Right. And, so, well, and Alfred said, here's the thing. Now, here's my concern. So you know when Gretz starts to coach back in, in Arizona? Yeah, late 90s, yeah. Okay. yeah. So he comes in <coughs> and he sees the game differently than other guys do. And his ability to maybe articulate yeah. or at least to get them to do it wasn't there. And he lost his mind quite a bit. Like he was a, a coach that that lost his temper quite a bit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and he was there was a lot of frustration because 
he knows what he can do and he expects others to be able to go out and execute in the same manner, maybe not to the same level, but in the same manner as he explains it to them. And, and I, I, that's one of my concerns because Alfredson was a great hockey player. Let's, let's not mince words here. For sure. However, Alfredson's work ethic was be- better than any of the other players on the team. There was nobody who worked harder who trained harder, Agreed. who who was in better shape than Alfredson. And he dragged, not dragged, but I think no, he inspired he other guys on the team to play like him. Absolutely. Or, or at least put the effort in like him. Not to bleach his guys like Marion Hosa. That's him. right, exactly. So then... And they're both Hall of Famers. So. Right. And so then, you get him behind the bench. And yeah. here he is. Now he's not leading from the front. He's got to lead. Like, unfortunately, as a coach, you're leading from behind. Yeah. Okay? And you've got to get these guys to follow what you would do. And that might be frustrating for him. I, I, I'm not saying that it will be. Well, I'm just saying that you need to have... Like, you know what? Alfredson needs an Alfredson playing for him. Yeah, well, right? Gretzky could, would have loved to have a Gretzky play it That's for right. him. No, no, but, Phoenix. Yeah, but even though... But look at uh, St. Louis. Marty St. Louis, he's got a few Marty St. Louis playing for him. Well, not a not Marty... No, no, not, not anybody like him. No, but, no, but guys know, with... No, no, guys with intensity, with skill, and, and who are... Die hard. Like Marty St. Louis, let me try that again in English, St. Louis. Easy for you to say. Exactly. <laughs> so I always found him to be not not only a skilled hockey player, but tenacious. And he wasn't, you know what, he's no Gallagher. He wasn't throwing himself into no, walls. No, no, he didn't have to. You know, he had but, but he ten was, times the talent, number right, one. But he was there, and he was, there was not a, a shift that he didn't put out. Well, look, he never there. gave up. He was never, he never drafted. Gave up. The guy's right. five foot nothing, and yeah. you know he was Calgary had him, Ottawa had him. He bounced around before he even landed in Tampa and got anything going there. Yeah. So you know it, it it's an interesting dynamic what he did in his career before he finished in New York and did the rest at the tail end of it. But I mean the guy's the oldest scoring champion in NHL history at thirty seven. Yeah. Nobody was older to win. It was a second of two. He's in the Hall of Fame deservedly so. He won the cup in 04. He was lights out with uh, Brad Richards and Vinny, and yeah. and and they, they were outstanding. I, it's to me, it's it's amazing. It's such funny TV. I don't know why I find this funny, but I kind of did when Wayne was coaching yeah. too. Is when he's leaning over and he's talking to somebody on the Montreal bench. I don't know. Pick anybody. Maybe it's Pizzetta or somebody, you know. And Marty's leaving in, leaning in, having this like heartfelt conversation. I'm going. I don't know, man. I, I don't know how much of that is actually sticking what you're saying, Marty, because just for the point you just yeah. made, how much Wayne, the thing about Wayne in, Ari- in Arizona, Phoenix at the time, the names, they just changed. I think everyone knows. But he actually improved that team for two straight years, you know? Well, he, I mean, he, they he, were, they, they, they came into the league uh, with nothing. They didn't get the Bettman bonus. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, they, they, got, they came in. It was. It was they, they, they had a, like the shittiest team. That they, you could possibly have had. Well, well they, they actually, you know, just... Without, right, Shane, without Shane Doan, they had nothing. I, well, right before Wayne got there, like, they, 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 had, they, had a, they had a couple of, like, they had a couple of decent seasons. They were not bottom feeders year in and year out. Wayne's third season, yeah, they started to slide. He, he just, you know, I think whatever, his message, he couldn't deliver it. And well, all there the was rest no money stuff, as well. There was well, no yeah, money all to, of that has you know, happened since day can't. one that's yeah. gone on there. But, I mean, Wayne... Uh, you know, I guess, I guess he wanted to stay in the game. Plus, they owed him money. You know, unlike the Mario situation where when they got won the lottery, got Sid, and everything changed, and Mario plays another 20, 30 games, retires, because now he knows the path to yeah. gold is paid. Whereas Wayne felt, well, I better get my ass involved here. This is my thought. Not, you know, my theory anyway is that he went back to coach. But he had some success. And, you know, not the least of which was Brian Boucher set the modern-day shutout record. Yeah, you know, so it was three three hundred and thirty nine minutes or something. They actually, the guy who broke it was an Ottawa guy, Randy Robitaille, was playing for the Atlanta Thrashers. He's the one who broke the shutout record. But Boucher, whose son Tyler is drafted okay. by the Senators, hasn't really got any anything going yet, injuries and whatnot. But I mean, interesting connection and all that. But Wayne actually had a little bit of success, and then it just died. Yeah, you know, it died. It died a quick death. But your point's well taken. I mean, the uh, infrastructure off the ice was shambles, always has been. Now they're playing in a university rink. And they're actually, 
I mean, they, they for for most of the season so far, past the oh, third they, mark, they're playing great. They've been in a wild card spot, yes. Chris. No, no, they're playing. You know, great. they've no been question. hanging around. And listen, Andre Turnier is phenomenal. Look what he did in the World Juniors. Look what he did here in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. If we if we don't have the the uh, the uh, COVID shutdown there, man, I'll tell you, the sixty sevens were poised with him to make some serious serious damage on that trip to the Memorial Cup, which sadly they never got a chance to do. And, and, and Another thing you know. fucked up by our Canadian government shutting everything down. There you go. Fucking COVID bastards. <laughs> okay. Let me just say uh, right now, I, like, we try. So someone said to me in the, in the dressing room, Chris, how come you don't get political on the show? And I said, well, because we don't like to get political on the show. And I don't like to get political on the show. Well, we, so we're talking hockey. We're not we're talking, talking politics. No, it's I a know, hockey but, show. When it, when it, but when it affects hockey, and we are a hockey show, but I, you know what, I, so I, I don't talk. I'm not talking politics and getting all riled up about politics. Well, like no. the way you get it about hockey, I get about politics, right? I understand you, that, you know but I mean? this is a but, hockey show. No, I know that. Know? I know. That's it. So it is. That's why we're doing that. When we get on the, uh, I, I don't know what we're going to call it, counterpoint with Haas and McGuire. Yeah. We'll do it. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let, changing the subject from, I sort of. Do sort of, you sort like of, the dismissal or no? It had to be done. Absolutely. You know, it had to be done. That's, Absolutely. you know what, do I like it? You know, I never like to see anybody lose their job yet still get paid. Um, yeah. Okay. But he, listen, you know what? He'll find something else in the NHL or the American Hockey League. He'll he'll still have his career. For sure. Yeah. And he's made some good money. That, you know what it is? Boucher bounced back. And you know what? And that McLean bounced back. You're coaching. Coaches are hired to be fired. Absolutely. And he lasted five years and that, you know. Yeah. So. Now, that being said, I'm going to move on a similar Ottawa Senator thing. I want to talk okay. about uh, two things. So the other night, you, I think you were at the game, okay? Yeah. With the penalty shot. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, and then everyone's all, you know, mocking Kachuk for getting all pissed off about yeah. the penalty shot. Yeah. And I watched that a dozen times. Yeah. That was a trip. 100%. That was a trip. Yeah. There's no way that anybody... Could I mean, and, and they like literally, they didn't go upstairs. The referee didn't do anything about it, and then they don't go up. They don't take. They don't. They don't look at you that. Can't, that's not reviewable. That's a ref's call. You call. That's right. The ref. You know, the rule is this: if you deem a penalty occurred on a penalty shot, you you re, the shot gets taken again. Taken again. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not something you review. Right. You can review if the puck crossed the line, if the goal went in, things of that nature. Right. But a penalty, you're gonna call. But you know what? He had every right. He was right. Because here's the thing. That whole taking out the feet on that, like, you know, coming in, uh, the goaltenders are doing, you know what, like, I say this, it ended my brother's hockey, I mean, even in yeah. just a men's, yeah. that, that exact type of play ended his, his hockey, yeah. and, uh, you know, when our silver tea kettle hit his head on the ice, was out cold, yeah. still has neck issues resulting from it, Terrible. and can't play anymore. Yeah. And, you know, like, we have to understand that, yes, I know it's competitive, we're doing these things, but when these penalties occur... The referee, well, like, what the hell? There's two referees on a penalty shot. It didn't yeah. have anything else to look at. We're like, like I don't understand it. it the, the thing that frustrates me is we'll never know if it was reviewed after the game by Steve Wacom or whoever. Well, no, you know, but have, they're not going to do been. anything about it. No, I understand. they will never admit that they did a fucking thing. Well, that's my, that's my point. They're, they've been above and beyond reproach or, or judgment or review publicly forever right, it's been so, that way ever since and red story in 1959 yeah. that's when it changed if you want to know the history of it that's when it changed there hasn't been a review publicly on an official really since that time and as far as i'm concerned it sucks it because is, it that's a brutal brutal non-call well we're holding that players, issue you should have got the shot we again hold, right we away. hold players accountable we hold yeah. coaches accountable yeah we hold brass people who are on not even on ice or even involved yeah. But if they say something that's uh, negative to the NHL, they can be fined, all these things. We hold everybody accountable except the officiating? Come on. That's horseshit. And I, I, like, it, it really is. And, and that, that um, mentality yeah. permeates all the way down to minor hockey. Okay? And now yeah. I get minor hockey. It's a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. Mistakes happen or whatever. But one of the things we've got to teach people is that you're human. And people accept that there was a mistake. But if you if you don't admit that you've ever made a mistake, then you're 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 part of the problem, right? And yeah. now and now and that's going to lead me into some of these these hits 
yeah. that we're that we're just, discussing. Just you want to finish? Yeah, I want to go back to that for a second because, for example, Major League Baseball, the umpires will give a statement after. You know, they're they're allowed to, they're asked to, they will do it. Um, I don't know about NFL officials. I, I I'm not an, enough familiar yeah, with I, it. I'm not a big but NFL. the NHL refs, I can tell you, in the mid 1990s, I was a columnist for the Ottawa Sun. I wrote I wrote sports a weekly hockey column, and um, uh, and I also was jumping on and off radio and TV. And uh, there was a number of incidents that was where the, the officials were second guests coming out of the yin yang, right? Mm-hmm. So I put the request into the league. I followed the formal channels to ask for a post game interview for an upcoming game. And, and I said, they said, well, there's, you know, there hasn't been any, you won't know if there's been any incident. Or not. I said, I don't care. I just, I just want to have an opportunity yeah, to interview uh, the official post game, Ottawa Senators game coming up. And they, they said no. I, of they, course, they told me they that. don't. They don't want to show any sort of, you know, fallibility in that. And, and you know what? In in some ways, you understand it, okay, because they have to be the authoritarian on the ice. Except they're not, because they turn around and you know. And so we have. You mentioned a couple of hits, like because because I still think that five games that on that Perron thing. He got six. He got he got six. Well, fuck. I still think that's horseshit. <laughs> what he okay? said on the show, he wouldn't have given him any. I would I not give him that day won. when he got sick. But I know, but that's horseshit. you were at the bar drinking, I think, if I, I was, remember. I was at, I was, I might have been there. You might have been there. When, the, when it came out. When a mutual friend of ours, his name for one reason, said, but it was Bubba, who <laughs> texted me and said he was drinking with you. And I said, yeah. tell Chris that Perron got six games. He says, he knows, he knows. <laughs> I may have, may have vented. Yeah. I may have vented. Apparently you were venting. Yeah. But, hey, listen, I, as I told you, I thought it would be four. He, he got six. Yeah. And there's no doubt about it. A cross check to the head. You're calling that all day. You think different. But anyways. Okay, but so. Believe I me, on. I'm no guy that's jumping but, on the, pulling on the, but then the I, sweater then I, of the league all the time. Right. No, no, to no. me, that was a, that had to be a suspension. <clears throat> okay. So, and then, but I was more outraged with the Cousins hit. Okay. Yeah. Which which pissed me off. No call. Nothing. A brutal or a brutal okay. play and a good call by you. Yeah. So and now and then then you know, so like so we we were talking with you and you sent today you know and you asked me what do I think about okay a, yeah. a number of these hits yeah okay yeah and so I'm gonna start with one he's like Robinson on Barron and yeah. I know I know this is Montreal Canadian ball yeah okay that wasn't a penalty oh my god it wasn't no because you know what if you watch he he slid he 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 did he did. A uh, um, a slow down with his with his um, left skate, okay, and he, he made that position him out. He didn't he didn't continue to go in. He slowed down. If you watch it slow motion, and if I can actually get the video to show and and like edit over top of this, yeah, you'll see that he kind of snow plows his foot to slow down as he's going in. He does make the hit. Okay, yeah. but it was it was not dirty and it was not intentional and it was more. Well, it was intentional. Well, but, no, no, but, but sorry, it wasn't it was intentional to hurt. It wasn't intent to hurt. No, right. I, okay. I I don't I don't believe there was. Yeah. But it's one of two ways. It's one of two ways. You either have to instill in these guys, and I believe this is what they're trying to do, is look, regardless of the scenario, you see numbers, it's full stop. That's well, it's okay. full stop. If you but, see the but numbers, but you know what? But here's here's the, the problem. problem: is the guys are turning. Well, yeah, but he uh, in that situation it was uh, I I I don't think it was a penalty at all. I know he got uh, yeah, five, five in a game, yeah, got five in a game, which yeah. I think was lame. Okay, and then well, you uh, thought the roll shouldn't have got anything. Okay, so. okay. it's coming from. Okay. I'm not sure Hang how much second. credibility you have right okay. now, right. saying that Robinson okay. didn't deserve so, even so, a penalty. Okay, so now Pasternak, Pasternak's yeah. hit. Do you think that was a penalty? Hundred percent. How the fuck is that a penalty? Hundred percent. He got him on his shoulder as he's coming through. It might have been his charging. shoulder. He, his it, shoulder back yeah. here. That's his. Yeah, it is. That is. Yeah, his back shoulder. here, not That's here. A, yeah, no, he no. caught him back he there. Caught him back there. Yeah, no, no. He caught him as he was coming by, and you know what? I well, would that say, was the most violent say, out of the four. I said. No, it was, you know, it was the hardest. Okay. Well, most but violent. It was the hardest. You know, and and I would say, and Pasternak's not a dirty player. Right, so no, but he day, went in with a lot. Are you talking about yeah, Robinson no, on Barron? So that I would call, I would have called that a charging call, okay? Yeah, I, I, and yeah. I, I could see that, okay, because he had enough steam up there. Yeah. It was a charging call, and and I, I, I will give you that, 
Okay. But you know but the way it works. If you can't, are you just offering your opinion on these, or the way you think the league should call it? I think the way the league should call well, it. Well, that's that's not going to happen. I know. Those days are gone. The ship okay, is then sailed. it's just my fucking opinion. Okay. Okay. So that, but here's the one that bothers me the most. Yeah. Evander Kane. Yeah. That hit. Yeah. That was right square on. There was not even an attempt. Yeah. To stop or yeah. to do anything. Yeah. Those are dangerous, and not even a fucking call. And he didn't get a call. And, and, and listen. I I don't mind the guy. At least, at least Hartman fought him. You know what I mean? So well, I'm not. No. Re- I mean later, but I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but listen, this is the problem. We're we're just two guys talking on yes. Oh no, but we care about the popular webcast. That's right. But yeah. I I mean the bottom line is is we are just two guys we offering are just our two opinion, guys. and we're rarely agreeing on anything. Well, that's how the NHL is calling it, and we're two yeah. guys who kind of follow the game, you know, yeah. a little bit. And have been involved in the game a little bit. Yeah. And yet, we're not really seeing it the same. So okay. what does that say? True. Okay, so let me ask you this. So, it doesn't matter what league you're playing in, okay? Yeah. You're going down. You know when you do that reach, which is the danger reach, okay? You're, you're reaching out to, to get a puck, and you and there's a guy coming. And, you're, and you put your head in the way of that guy coming. Yeah. Okay? And he is not... Intending to hit you in the head, but it is a headshot. Okay. Yeah. Because he's going for the puck as well. You know what I mean? Right. In some way like that. Right. So you and it happens. Okay. Yeah. I think that just my opinion here. Yeah. Okay. I think that we have gotten a little too, um, I don't know, strict on the whole headshot thing. If a guy's taking his head down and doing the reach like that and a guy accidentally hits him, yeah. I don't think it should be the mandatory headshot, you know what I mean, issue. Because if the head is below the head, it's not a headshot. No, I, I don't disagree with you. The, the, the problem is that the officials, there's no, there's no black and white. They have to make the call at the time. And then since everybody now goes to the eye in the sky to review so many plays. Yeah. Now you can even assess a five minute major, go review it and, then and make sure the, the stick, yeah. you know, for obvious reasons, because of how San Jose got screwed on that five minute major where it wasn't even their stick and, and, and lost the game and lost the series. So they said, we're going to make this reviewable from now on. And so in terms of, of sticking like that, but some, and, and some of the other plays now they will, they will go and review, but ultimately when supplementary discipline is either handed out or not, it's still there's somebody else, Chris, who has to make a judgment based on their interpretation of rules, whether it be whatever it is, 48 dash whatever for the headshot right. that you're referring to. Yeah. And I'm not disagreeing with you. Look, if you're reaching, you put yourself in a vulnerable position, and a guy's coming in, and this is the old thing where people said about Zidane O'Chara, six foot nine, bare feet, seven feet on skates. He comes, he hits a lot of guys. His elbows are right there anyway. Yeah. So what the hell is he supposed to do? Exactly. You know, so so you ran into that scenario, and I think he got leeway out there from a lot of at least the experienced officials, I believe. Probably. I don't know, you're a hardcore Bruin fan. You would maybe know more about that, watching them maybe a little well, bit more. Well, I was only me, upset but... when they got penalties. When they didn't get penalties, I didn't give a shit. Yeah, well, there, there you go. <laughs> I, I just think, look, we're... we're the... We're trying to dissect. I put that in there for discussion only because there's been a rash of hits from behind. Yeah. And I'm of the belief, and I have been for years, and I've written this in stories, and I've said it publicly, I've said it privately with friends over a thousand pints, that part of it today is guys aren't, the, the guys, the boys aren't playing contact hockey till they're 14 yeah, years absolutely. old. Yeah. And I believe what we've seen is a generation of players who do not know how to protect themselves. You know what? I would agree with you on that. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna fucking argue with you. Uh, okay, so let's talk about. Uh, oh, you know what we're gonna do right now? Speaking of uh, political issues. Yeah. Fucking LRT. Yeah. Okay. So we got a question from a, a guy, a disgruntled Ottawa Sens fan. Okay. So for the uh, for our Ask Liam. Oh yeah. So, so right. hang. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna cut to Ask Liam, and then we'll be back. Welcome to Ask Liam on Offside with Haas McGuire, which by the way, I'm Haas, 
I'm McGuire. All right, just so we get we that straight. We never actually did that at the did time. We did it? We, I don't think we did it. No. No, I'll we'll have to edit that in later. Oh. Wow. Or something. Okay. It's okay. So here's the thing. Uh, so we have a question that came came here. Yeah. And I, I got to read it here. And, yeah. and the guy describes himself as a... Uh, Going to a small Midwestern... Oh, sorry. Wrong yeah. letter. Wrong letter. <laughs> uh, I can't believe this happened to me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, okay. He's, he's waiting for the LRT train and he was pissed off. So he goes, yeah. uh, has, a, has a team ever come back and made the playoffs Yeah. after losing 15 out of 26 in regulation? Right. And so that is the question. Now, yes. I don't know if you know the answer. I do. Do you? I do know the answer. I do know the answer, and it's it's uh, because only because it's in the news. Oh, so it's in the, okay. It's that's a statistic. Obviously, it's really it's a bit of a it's not so much of an ask Liam. Hey Liam, I've got this trivia question. This guy wants to know because of Ottawa's most recent loss, they've now yeah. got 15 losses and 26, and you're looking at yeah. the 11% chance of coming back. Has anybody done that in the CAF era, which, as you know, Chris, started in 2005-06? And the answer is yes. A few short years after that, one team. The Ottawa Senators? Washington Capitals. Oh, really? Yeah. But what about the year... Uh, Ottawa in the Hamburglar run. Yeah. Came, that's the greatest defi- overcome deficit in NHL history. They were 14 points out on February 10th. 14 points in 2015. And they went 21-3. and three. In their last 24 games and made the playoffs and then unfortunately ran into Carey Price and the Habs in the first yeah. round but that's another story folks but I mean the Capitals and the, I think the question that it came in was oh, well I know clearly it was before DJ was like oh yeah exactly because the point I think the guy wanted me to make I believe was that Washington fired their coach that year which was Glenn Hanlon Okay. And he was replaced by well, I never Bruce. Liked his, there it is. is Bruce Boudreau. Oh, okay. Boudreau so came the, in the and started handling the Capitals. was always his fucking helmet and mask. I hated that look. I hated that look. I, you, you know, know I, 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 well, Wayne scored his first goal ever on him, but I mean. Oh, right? Really? He was, he was for. Uh, Who I mean, was Hanlon playing for at that he time? He was with Vancouver. He was Vancouver, okay. Yeah, he was in Vancouver. It's, it's, it's great. October 14, 79, Wayne scores the 1851 mark of the third period against Glenn Hanlon. Vancouver Canucks tie the game at four. And, and There's uh, that 1851 number again. There you go. It's 10 years and a day later, which we talked about an earlier yeah. uh, offside with Hoss yeah. McGuire and asked Liam Wayne yeah. gets career point number 1,851 to pass yeah. Cordy Alice. It's one of those yeah. crazy anecdotal things. But anyway, yeah, they fired Glenn Hanlon, hired Bruce Boudreaux. They're the only other team to do it. So Toronto, or Ottawa, I should say, trying to... Uh, to uh, repeat a very rare hit part and part of hockey yeah. history here. Well, let's hope they do. There you go. Here's your right. asking him for, for this week. For this week. All right. Well, we're going to come back. Okay, we're back. See how we did that? I don't even have a bumper to in between. I think I was just coming straight back. Okay. So we are <laughs> in. Time for this a sip? is a high. You do have a high. You go ahead, have a sip. Thank you. We have time for a sip, and uh, we're a high end production here. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah. <sighs> You know, as we lament the shittiness of the Ottawa Senators this season, yeah, and, and I hate to use that term, but because I'm I'm a Sens fan, like I, I'm a Bruins fan, but I'm a yeah. Sens fan too, yeah. And I, and I, I I'll I'll be honest with you, it's hard to watch the Sens play Boston because I get excited about both teams. Oh, right. I would be happy if either team went. That's where I'm at right now. Okay. Okay. I'm at that almost balance. Well, good okay. for you. But luckily, I don't have to worry about that because Boston always wins. Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, they don't. That's the funny thing about it is that the the uh, the Senators have had quite a bit of success. Oh, yeah. I, I, know. I, I, you know, I block all these. I, I block all the negative things out. So, so here's the thing. Uh, other Canadian teams, though. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> can you imagine how pissed Gary Bettman's going to be when we have a Vancouver... And I hate to say it, Ottawa Toronto? Centers. No, I don't want to say Toronto. But they're there. Could right? be. They're there. We they have, very we quietly have, rolled along here. Yeah. So we have an all-Canadian Stanley Cup, which would be great for Canadians. We'd yeah. be all into it. But it would be horrible for the NHL and the U.S. television network. Well, I mean, would it really? I, You know, at this point right now, let's just say hypothetically it was Vancouver and Toronto. Two pretty big markets. Yeah. I mean, if the Leafs ever got back to a final, I think it would be absolutely 
absolutely mind-numbing the overall impact that would have on 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 the NHL. There's there's no question about it. There's as many Leaf haters as there are lovers, and yeah. and the the people that would tune in to watch that ride through th- three series and into a final, I think, would be legendary. So as a, but but know, that's Canadian. So what? Let's say you had every true. fucking Canadian watching. Yeah, you've got thirty some million viewers. You yeah, thirty eight million. The numbers viewers. are with if, the numbers. If you, and that's getting every woman, child. You know what I mean? Person Doesn't who matter. just arrived on their fucking. Tour. They're they're a niche. Okay. It's a niche sport in the states. It's always going to be. Yeah, but it's always going to be. No, I understand. But they're they're, they're behind tractor people. poles south of the Mason Dixon line. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's it just it, it is what it is. You know, it, it's you, you've got the original Corn six hole. markets. Yeah. And yeah. and you've got so, the success that the uh, you know all the LA te- all the California teams have had different measures of success Anaheim Cup LA two cups you know that there's there's obviously Dallas have done so they they they've, they've done their thing but yeah because we're a smaller population yeah but I mean yeah I mean I know where you're going with this because there's three Canadian teams in the in the power rankings right right yeah, yeah. and the top five top, top five. five. Top five. Three I don't, top five. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know when that last happened. I actually do not know when that's last happened. So it's it's uh, it's it's pretty amazing. Now, for anybody who doesn't know, power rankings are done weekly. So yeah. it's more what you did in the last seven days. Like you can jump up a bunch of spots or down a bunch of spots, but you're not coming off the mat. Like you can jump up a bunch, but you're not going from like 25 to 1 or something. No. So they've all been doing obviously. Unless you've just picked up me in a, in a waiver's draft. Yeah. Yeah, unless you pick up the shooter here for Sunday <laughs> Saturday night, Coniston, you know, then 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 maybe you can have uh, have some good luck there and jump yeah. up. But I I think that's a pretty cool stat. I think uh, kudos to all of them. I mean, Rick Bonus missed six seven games after his wife's right. stroke. They barely missed a beat. They come back. They're playing they're great. Playing Hellebuck great. looks great. Yeah. And you know, and everybody was thinking Winnipeg was just going to just go right out the window. Well, this nobody's going to stay now. They're yeah. signing guys left, right, and center. And and you know, I mean, everything. Everything seems to be at least right now. Anyway, yeah. they're they're playing well. They're tough out. And uh, man, I, I I just love you know you, you talk about teams, what what their profile is, what what it is like Winnipeg. They just don't take any shit from anybody. They they just don't. I love that. I just love the way they play. Even though they lost Bufflin, they lost so many guys from from you know when 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 they when they had when they, the new yeah. 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 they had that decor, including like Ben Chirot, like he was on that team. They had Tyler Myers, yeah. they had Bufflin, they had a bunch of guys, and just. You know, they just, uh, he's not sure if Myers is there now or not. He was in Vancouver. But anyways, uh, yeah, he was there. He was in the Buffalo deal. They, they just, you know, they've never lost that MO yeah. of what drives them. And, and this is what something I think Ottawa has been searching well, for. Well, their lunch pail group. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Like good, good you know what I mean? Like, like your old Bruins from the 70s. Like the, well, yes. Like the old Bruins. From the, the original the lunch pail group. Yeah, was that was that what they were they were there? Yeah, were Don Cherry said, yeah, they pack a lunch. Yeah, they pack a lunch. They come to work and eleven twenty goal scorers, nineteen seventy eight. It'll yeah. probably never be broken. Yeah, so, well, that's uh, pretty cool. Didn't see, win a cup. They ran into the Habs, but that's okay. Yeah, let's not talk about these things. You know? Okay, so uh, something I want to talk about though, because it is Christmas, and uh, and we want to talk about your favorite Christmas hockey memory. Okay. 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 I know that Kristen asked earlier. Oh, maybe you could. You know, you remember your first pair of skates? Yeah. And stuff like that. And I, I, so I whatever. I can, you know. But what, what's your favorite Christmas hockey type no, memory? No question. Two, two, two things immediately spring to mind. Um, when the first hockey stick I ever had was a CCM Bobby Hall hat trick uh, stick. Did you have to curve it yourself? It's a, I did not. I did not. <laughs> I only had a little curve on it. But uh, when when I when I when it di- when it did not work for me in ice hockey anymore, and I need another stick, I use it. I use it exclusively for ball hockey at St. Leonard's. It's my favorite stick. Dad got me. I eventually I broke it. I cried. Uh, I think it was ten. And uh, that Christmas, I had a new stick. Dad knew what I liked, and he had there was a stick on the tree. I was the happiest kid ever. The other thing, and if my good friend, who you know very well, also Kevin Jardine, yeah, if he was sitting here. He'd laugh because he knows he knows what I'm about to say. Cause I played so much hockey in the driveway and on the fields when they would freeze. And I was one of the only kids then that had a net. Okay. So I would drag that net around and in one year between the winters and the summers, dragging on the driveway back to the barns, I could fire pucks or balls, uh, I'd destroy the net. Yeah. So basically, minimally, minimally, every two years, 
I, I, I needed a new net, net and dad knew this and, and I always got one. And then one year I, I needed a net and you know, we went through dutifully all the presents, me, Mike and Sean, my brothers and everything. And I knew right away to come down. Like there's a net wrapped up under the tree. Yeah. You've got to see it. That's right. In the 19, early 1970s, there just wasn't much there. So you could see it. There was a net wrapped up yeah. in the box. Right. And I said, Oh Jesus, there's nothing here. There's nothing here. And I was ready to cry. And we open all the presents and everything else. And my dad's smoking his pipe and he's opening his first drink of the day. It's probably quarter to nine in the morning or something. And, and, uh, go, damn, like this. And he went, Oh, Liam, God, I forgot to bring the net up. It's downstairs. It's in the basement. I went, Yes! God, I was so happy. <laughs> I raced downstairs in our dark, dungy, dimly lit basement with cobwebs everywhere that had tarantulas in them. It seemed like it at the time. And I went in and I, hunted around for it. There it is. And I hauled it out. I had that baby put together in 20 minutes. I was out in the driveway just peppering it with shots. Uh, you so know what? They're my two greatest Christmas memories. Well, that's, that, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I, I don't Yourself? have... You know what? I We didn't get a lot of new hockey stuff or anything like that. So yeah. it wasn't like, hockey related at Christmas time. Uh, you know, I, I, I we, we got a net. We had a net. I remember a year we had a net for a while. Yeah. But again... Uh, so where, where I live, I lived where the street light was oh, okay, in our little town. Yeah. Okay. So we lived here. Jimmy Fox lived across the street. Yeah. Okay. The Boyd's over here, like pretty good little. Randy Boyd's family. No, well, Randy lived a little further. Okay. So it was, uh, it was Vic Boyd and his oh, kids. Oh, okay. okay. Peter, Peter was a good friend of mine. Peter was, uh, at the end of the day, he was a goaltender in, in real hockey and, yeah. and he was a flamboyant goaltender, the big sprawl, everything like that. But he was, Rogi. oh yeah, he was, you know what I mean? And he was a Montreal Canadiens fan. Right? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, but, was, and everybody, but everybody congregated at, at like at, at night to play underneath the streetlight at yeah. our house. So it was like, there was always 15, 20 kids playing road hockey. I don't remember it so much as a, like anything Christmas, just that we were out there and we would like, we didn't, we had, we'd walk down the end of the street to the pond. And we play hockey out there. We do all this stuff, and you know, like it was just what we did. Yeah, that was our. It was just our way of life. You know what I mean? I, we didn't get a lot of gifts. If we, like my father was big on getting one gift for the whole family that he could use. Okay. <laughs> um, like um, no, we got funny. gifts. We got gifts. We got a few things. I remember, you know, pellet guns, and you know, those were like pretty yeah, special yeah. stuff, like that. Something to kill something with, you know. Yeah, good. But, you know, it was useful. But I, you know, we never got. I, I will say this. I, I think we shoot bats and pellet guns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you try to. They're very hard to hit. Well, you know what? I tell you, we. Um, uh, you know, when I think about the carnage that we caused with oh, pellet guns when Jesus. we were kids, you know what I mean? Without an understanding of, you know, environmental laws, stuff like that. Yeah. But I never really, I don't, I don't recall. I mean, me and my, but I should ask my brothers this if I, if they could remember a, like a thing, but a, all of my hockey gear was yeah. a hand me down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It was always a hand me down from my brothers. I would, the odd time I'd get something. And I remember, I remember this though, when you get a new pair of skates, okay. You'd have to go in the bathtub with them. Okay. So that they, and soak them in the bathtub and then sleep in them. Okay. So that they would fit your feet. Now they warm them up. They heat them up in the oven and stuff. That's what you did. You did. I, I don't even you remember when I got a, a new pair of skates. I, I We bought used skates for me. Uh, uh, the first well, that, yeah, no. When I say new, it was all new used. Okay. Like everything everything okay. was a hand-me-down yeah. that we got, you know, from. And, and, and everybody was like that. You know, nowadays. Well, yeah, I don't know any of my friends so, so they where it was any different They won't at that take time. used equipment. Uh, yeah, you can bring it to uh, no, play, play it again. Play it again. Play it again. Yeah. But if you go to a charity that says, oh, we're trying to outfit a hockey team, or, you know, we're going to send a hockey equipment up north, yeah. they won't take used equipment. They only take new equipment oh. because of liability reasons. Oh. It's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, I know for a oh, fact okay. Jimmy Fox wore his fucking brother's skates. Okay, Michael had was older. Okay, yeah, yeah. But Jimmy wore those. If Jimmy Fox, who was a thirty go plus goal scorer in the NHL, yeah. was fucking one of the greatest uh, uh, junior hockey players ever to play in Canada, okay, yeah. if he could fucking use used equipment back in the day, I'm sure yeah. that you, somebody in Tuk Tuk Tuk, yeah. okay, who your, was going to be your son never had used equipment. No, I did. Yes, he did. Okay. I got from my, my nephews. All right. Con well, my son did too. Yeah. Connor and so, Caleb. Yeah. Like all of Evan's equipment, 
came from Connor Kellen. They Perfect. were 13 well, years older, and it got down, like, you know, and, and so... Rory's too. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Same well, thing, that's, man. Here's the thing. It's, a, it, it's recycling at its best. Right? Yeah, it is. When you go through that, like yeah. people go, "Oh, we got to buy this new light." What do you do with the old stuff? Oh, we throw it out. Well, then, you, then you're wrong. You know what I mean? Like yeah. now, like because first of all, it costs way too much money for new new stuff nowadays. Like yeah, if I go to like I and I, my stick has lost its flat. Like it, it's yeah. it's too whippy now. Yeah, okay, it's got and it's like I don't want to go and spend two hundred dollars on a stick. No, but I have to because that's yeah, what they you charge can't, you. Can't get new stick. You can't get. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. so, and so I one item that yeah. So that I will hopefully get that for Christmas if my oh. children are watching. Hey. Okay. Jeez. It's, uh, a little nudge, a, nudge, wink, wink. Exactly. Maybe that old Santa know there. That's right. Exactly. Put down the forty and uh, get the big fellow's stick here. Yeah, there that's we go. Right. Well, you know what? I I'm pretty sure. Actually, that's my last stick that I have. I, I was Evan got that for me. There for you Christmas. go. So it was you know I get that's what I get now. I get something that I can use for the kids. Yeah. Right, you know what I mean, like hockey stick or, um, yeah, that's basically it. I got a hockey stick, you know, uh, well, that's, stuff that's like that. Nice, man. That's, yeah, that's, so that's, that's my nice. that's my Christmas memory I, that I can think of just recently. No, I but, didn't have much. Yet. I had a stick you know, and nets. So, I mean, that's it. Wasn't like I had a. Ton we were so time. poor. You know, we couldn't even afford a puck. We used to get the dog to shit in the backyard yeah, and mold yeah. it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Well, it's horse balls 140 years ago. It's, uh, well, you know what? It seemed you know, to work, right? Well, they figured out a way to, uh, you know, to get things across the line somehow and count goals. But, I mean, they yeah. didn't play Stanley Cup playoff games with horse balls. But, no. I mean, when hockey started and a lot of what was obviously then outdoors as it was starting as in groups and towns and yeah. things around primarily eastern Canada, such as it was yeah. in the 1870s, you know, and uh, eighteen early eighteen eighties, the, the the families and the towns and the people used used horse balls, man. Well, listen, you, what the it, hell else were you going to use? There was no pucks in those days. Well, exactly. There was that, no, they hadn't come up with them. Yeah, and they were plentiful. I can tell you that. Even I mean, they used a lacrosse ball, and then eventually they they thought let's cut the sides off it. Which is, is that what, how they developed? Until the they puck? got to the first puck, because yeah. the ball would bounce, and they said, how do yeah. we stop it from bouncing? And and we'll cut the sides off it. Maybe it'll stay flatter and everything. And the puck developed from there. Oh, really? And it was really Art Ross, longtime yeah. Bruin, well, for a player as well, Stanley Cup winner as a player and outstanding player, Hall of Famer, and then longtime executive with the Bruins who who developed um, uh, a puck and, puck. and it was called it was called the Art Ross puck. Really? Yeah. Well, prior to that it was the Spalding puck and then the Art Ross puck, and and that's what the NHL Jesus. uses for decades until companies. Started, started making to, yeah 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 well that's you know what I, I had no Robertson. idea I had no idea that and now is that the reason that we the the, the trophy is called the Art Ross Trophy for scoring yeah. the Art Ross because of the puck because well of the not puck? because of the puck oh no, no. Okay. no because just, of him okay yeah much like the Conn Smythe which Trophy and the Conn Smythe named after just named Conn after, after, yeah. after uh, obviously yeah. came out in 1965 yeah. the Art Ross Trophy most people don't know this but the Art Ross Trophy didn't actually start until 47 48. That was long after the NHL had started. So 30, 30 what did they have before that? Nothing. You just Nothing. you got a plaque. Just said, hey, you're a leading scorer in the NHL. Well, that's like early. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Same thing. There yeah. you go. And you get, yeah. you get, don't you get a basket yeah. of wings and a pint at the middle or something? You do or? get, well, you get team nachos. Oh, there you no, go. Team, team nachos. nachos. Team yeah. nachos. I, uh, and so, you know what I like about, but speaking of which, this is my favorite part. I'm playing hockey tonight at 11 o'clock. Holy, let's uh, right. So, uh, then we're having a, a big thing. And then tomorrow night, playing again. And then we're having another big thing. Yeah. And then Thursday night. Uh, another big thing. Yeah, it's the best part about being Leafs. But I go to the pub, right? Yeah. Okay. We know. I, I we can we can plug it. Can we plug it? Why the not? Mill? Why not? By the way, it, my son works there. Why not? Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I yeah. forgot that. I, sure. So so the Mill Tavern in in Manitic. Okay. It's it's our it's our local. Okay. They have decked out that place this oh year. God, isn't it? It's so spectacular. Wow. It is amazing. It's so <coughs> first of all, yeah. every inch of wall has got something Christmas on it, like light or yeah. Oh, it, it or is just you know what. It is so perfect, okay. And uh, honest to God, so kudos to the mill, by the way. And you know, and so I go, I go in there, and you probably get this sometimes too. I, you know, I mean, especially if Rory's there. But I go in there, okay, and uh, I don't even have to order. Yeah, my whiskey, and my I have a whiskey, and I have a Coke, so that I don't drink too much, right? My whiskey and my Coke are there, boom, okay. Nice. 
right, I, I don't even have to look. She just comes, she puts it there, okay? And, um, and I you know it's, it's great. I love going to a local where one, they know you, two, uh, they care about decorating and they care about making yeah. a, an experience for the people who were there. Yeah. And so kudos to them. And by the way, they said we should shoot an episode there, by the way. Yeah? Yeah, the girl, and I, I forget her name. Doreen? Dor- no, not Doreen. No, no, no. No, Doreen's the manager, right? Or well, whatever she was. One of the owners. One of the, she she owner? Her and her husband own it, I believe. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I may be wrong. David's, oh, no. David's a manager. Right, David, yeah. And and, and then uh, there's another young lady. And I, Okay, but I didn't know that she owned it. Yeah, well, it's... Okay, I thought she was... Okay, well, that's yeah. great. So, anyways, it was the is. other girl that, that works on Monday night. She said, you guys should shoot an episode here at the, uh, at the mill. And I yeah. said... Well, they got absolutely. that little stage area there. Yeah, so up, could, up, up top. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Could do one could do you one know? there easily. Well, maybe we'll do one where, during the World Juniors. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. something like that. Yeah, you got early games, eh? So, you could go so, in there like... Uh, because they, they play at 11 o'clock on, in the morning. Yeah, their first one's at 8.30 a.m. I mean, that's going to be a long day of drinking. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they've, well, got, uh, they've got other days where it's, where it's, yeah. it's like at 11 o'clock. Right. You know? Well, so you, that'd be perfect. Go yeah. in at 10 o'clock. Yeah. We shoot the show. Then we watch the thing. You know, I, it's just a thought. Yeah. I'll talk to them tonight when, I, when I'm there. Talk to them, right? Run it by yeah. them. I mean, thing is, too, going oh. in at that time, you could get in and out early before, without disrupting... Yeah, like, oh, well, what yeah, would exactly. be a situation where you're taking away spots from customers it's, or something? It's not like I've ever dis- I've ever been in a bar where there's anything disruptive that happens. <laughs> I know. Well, I certainly <laughs> haven't. <laughs> okay, so listen, we have we have a couple more things to do, but first we're going to uh, do our puck bunnies. Why? Yeah. Yes, we haven't done puck bunnies. Right. Okay, and this being our Christmas, this is going to be our Christmas puck bunny episode. Okay. So stay tuned. I really, 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 really like her. Welcome back to uh, our Puck Bunny segment for Christmas of 2023. And you know what? I, I've chosen somebody, Liam, after a long deliberation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that you I poured like, endlessly over poured, her pictures. I, I did. I did. And do you want to, You're not going to believe this. Okay. I have no idea who this, it is. This this chick, this woman, this broad, this what I don't even know what you like. I need to say all these things, and we want letters, right? Okay, this 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 dame. Oh, they come in. This dame, okay. Yeah. Sixty nine years old right now. It's, and what? you you got to see what she looks like now. And she was smoking, and she's still smoking. Sixty nine years old. Kudos I'll tell you what. Her. You know what? I would drop kick a nun to spend the night with her. Okay. Okay. There you go. Who is it? Our puck bunny of the week. Yeah. Is Christy Brink. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. So you may remember her from the Ferrari driving, you know. You may know her from such. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but she drove the Ferrari in, in in vacation, the original. Right. With Chevy Chase driving, she was the oh uh, yeah driving yeah. The, the the Ferrari beside yeah. there that he was fantasizing about. Yeah. She also married a uh, probably one of the greatest musicians. Oh, well, Billy Joel. Billy Joel. Yeah. Um and uh, yeah, you know, swimsuit. Uh, she'll always be a woman to me. There you go. Yeah. Uh, nice. Yeah. I see what you did there. She Very was, good. She was swim. Was she swimsuit? Model swimsuit too? edition. I believe she. Um, I think if I remember what, remember correctly, Chris. I think she was record setting three consecutive years on the cover. <sighs> well, I, t- I mean, tell you one thing. That's impressive. I was, stuff. I was gonna. I was gonna mention being under the covers. Yeah. Okay. I, I wonder. I wonder how thirty years under the covers. Under the covers. I. I, I gotta tell you, she's an attractive lady. Yeah, it's okay. beautiful. And she she likes to ski. I don't know if you remember. She her hell. I there was a she used she broke her leg skiing, oh. and they had to helicopter her out. Okay. Okay. And um, and they and you know, but imagine the year the doctor and Christy Brinkley comes in. Like, no, you know what I mean. I it's like can't, uh, I would be like, yeah. sorry, but you know, you know, your your leg's not going to make it because <laughs> I'm too busy staring at you. You know. Yeah. Uh, so no, that's the you know to the professionalism of the doctors. So yeah. what else can we say about Christy Brinkley other than that? Like I'm pro, I'm posting. I while we're doing this, there's pictures coming up. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Of Christy Brinkley, and there's probably thousands. She's like she was one of the top models for like a hundred years. Yeah, many years. And I, I I well, they voted her, I believe, in the states, uh, one of the most beautiful women of the 20th century. I know there's a few that probably fit in that yeah. category, but. 
you know, she's a Michigan girl of birth, but then like most of them moved down to the California area somewhere and, uh, and you know, life of fame and riches uh, undoubtedly on the back of a lot of hard work. Uh, well, you know what? It's not easy. It's not easy being on I your put back. that on a TiVo for, yeah. <laughs> for you there. But <laughs> I know. I didn't want to say the whole back I was going, thing. Let's see how quickly yeah, you I know, up I, on I, this, I did pick up on it. I just, you know, what I don't want to do is I don't want to take this into the gutter. Yeah. You know what? I would drop kick a nun to spend the night with her. Well, that's, okay. still, no, that's, that's definitely not you, for you know, sure. Yeah, exactly. There's one thing I, we've known, an offside that, of Hosmer McGuire. Is you that I always take there. the high road. Yeah. Always take the high road. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I would drop kick a nun to spend the night with her. Okay? You know what? I would drop kick a nun to spend the night with her. Okay? Okay. Kick a nun to spend the night with her. And uh, I'll be there so, to meet you. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no. So. Great choice. Beautiful woman, still alive, 69 years old, looks fantastic. 69? I can't believe like, it. Get it? So, yeah. uh, no, yeah. but she's, she is like, that's almost 70. It like, is, yeah. To think the thoughts. Well, 70 is a new, like 40. Apparently. Yeah. Like, I mean, listen, she, I mean, at 70 years old. Yeah. 70 it's, years it's, old. Well, you'll have see that. My, my voice was just changing. I, I heard was going that. Through, yeah. I was going through puberty again. again. 13, 14 okay. again. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, because that is, an, I, I, you know, to, to be 70 years old and look like that. I mean, first of all. She's only eaten, you know, eaten seven carrots in her whole life, though, because she can't, you can't possibly, you know what I mean, you know, and she must work out like 800 hours a day, you know, and stuff like that. We make the cover of three consecutive Sports Illustrated swimsuit editions, which I don't believe yeah. any, I don't believe anybody else has done. Can't imagine the dedication to your nutrition that, that, that you have to have. Oh, and so. the workout, I mean, to have that kind of body that was... It was toned but not muscular. Like it, she had, she she had the perfect, you know, figure. Yeah. But you know, she was toned but not, you know, grotesque in some ways. I don't know how do you would describe it, but do you remember Angela Bassett's arms? In you know how she she had not really. Oh, but, okay. But so I mean, I know she's she an attractive lady, yeah. but you know what? Those arms. I don't like a woman who's got bigger pipes than me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I like a woman. I like to have that look. And she was you know, anyway. She's got that attractive look. Uh, about her, she's and so got the look. she got the look. That's yeah. who's that? Roxette or something? I don't know. Is that who it is? Roxette. That's an Maybe. Ottawa band. Where's is it? Ottawa band? I don't know. I don't know. What was the band from Ottawa? Uh, eight seconds. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh, is that another model of yours? Or it's that? another model of mine. Eight seconds. Um, <sighs> okay. Yeah, All right. You just no, you hurt my you hurt it's me. Just zinging him in there, folks. He goes, there. He's wearing off on yeah. me. Yeah. You know, he wants to talk <laughs> hockey, and I'm telling jokes here. I mean, uh, this geez. is the thing. All right. Well, so here's kudos to our uh, our puck bunny of the week, uh, the very beautiful, very old apparently, uh, but still smoking hot, Christy Brinkley. Yeah. He was a skater boy. She said, "See you later, boy." He wasn't good. Hey, welcome back to Zamboni Boy for this. And we have chosen, okay, a um, for Zamboni Boy this week, none other than the most famous male ass on television, okay? Uh, David Caruso, okay? And if I had sunglasses, I would just take them off right now yeah. and say something, you know. Did he, he never actually took the glasses off, did he? When he did, he did that, did. that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, was he, it, what was it again? It was uh, CSI Miami. CSI Miami. Yeah. But was, before that, NYPD Blue and NYP. his ass. It was a big he, deal. He played Detective, I think John Kelly or Detective Kelly. I know for a fact this was 1995-96 winter because Liz and I, my ex-wife, we she was in prenatal, okay. and we would race home, race home on Mondays to watch that show. I absolutely loved his character, and at the time, I didn't know it was a spinoff from Mad Dog and Glory. Oh, I didn't. That know he was either. in with Bill Murray. And, uh, and was it Robert De Niro? Anyway, I forget. But he plays a cop in that one too, but a cop who takes no shit. In fact, in, in, in that movie, he beats the crap out of a guy in a bar, a fellow cop who would hit a woman, who was hitting, okay. who yeah. hit, hitting, hitting a woman, his wife. Oh, okay. hitting his wife or girlfriend okay. or something. And he just went up to, uh, it, the, the, it was just so expertly written and he played the part so well. I mean, he was also in First Blood with Sylvester Stallone. And and uh, so, so what role did he play in that? Was he, he a was cop? he was a cop. He, he was, was one of, okay. He was one of the young cops. Guys. He was, yeah, he was very young in it. Obviously, yeah, it's years ago. But when 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 uh, when Rambo gets brought into the police station with Brian Dennehy, yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. one of Brian Dennehy's uh, uh, sheriffs or, okay. or, or officers, 
And they, when they take uh, Rambo downstairs to, to complete the investigation, put the hose on him and everything else, then they have to they have to do something else before he snaps and goes nuts, beats the shit out of everybody, including Caruso in that. I think he breaks his nose. But anyways, he hammers everybody then goes on the run. That's the greatest thing, the whole thing. Oh, whole you know thing what? I love. Love Cla- it. Classic film, by the way. Classic it's still, film. It's still... Still holds true. I, 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 I love it. I watch it right up to the point till he comes back in the city. When he when he jumps on the uh, on on the on the army thing going back in, we all know how that's going to end then after because we've all seen it. But all the point, the best part is uh, when when the colonel's looking and he can see the smoke coming out of the side of the mountain. Now he knows Rambo's still alive. You got Danny, you're running around like an idiot. The one guy's already dead, firing him in a little helicopter. Everything's such a good movie. I kind of like violence, eh? Yeah, so well, it's, that's it's, 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 it's so good. But David Caruso embodied that, man. He embodied that. Like him and Sipowitz and NYPD yeah. Blue. Like they just took no shit from anybody. How do you not admire that as characters? That's, that's, these are the type of shows and movies that we all should watch. That's right. Well, and you know what? And now, David Caruso's character would be a transvestite, uh, you know, guy who thinks he's a toaster oven. Who, who, you know who he, knows? He doesn't, I, yeah. he doesn't accept Well, he it. wouldn't do that, but I mean, others probably already have, and you yeah. and I will never watch those shows if they are any like that. No, I, I, you know, I don't care anyways. Do it the hell ever you want. But... Uh, what was it CSI Miami? CSI Miami. Yeah, and you were emulating there at the yeah. start, which has been joked about for a thousand years. Yeah. I know. <laughs> he made the little pun after the dead bodies yeah. there and whatever. You know, to make you know. the comment. I mean, exactly. but you know, he didn't take any crap in that show either. I mean, I think that was became the stable part of how he acted and the characters that he portrayed and the roles that he that he portrayed. Mad Dog and Glory when he fights the guy upstairs. And again, a character. Oh, and I don't remember that. I don't. Oh yeah, it, it's it's he he. I mean. You know, it's a it's a friggin' movie, so whatever, yeah, yeah. right? But I mean, they write it in there like it's just a massive brawl upstairs, and they're sitting downstairs and they're they're listening to the fight because it's a much bigger guy, and he should be hammering Crusoe's ass, but all you hear is furniture being broken and glass and chairs and everything else. They go, what the hell, man? He should be hammering him, and then they they both say, well, let's go up and check it out, and both Crusoe and the other guy are just they're catching their breath because they beat the shit out of each other. They're both cut to rat shit. And they're sitting there. The, the room is just absolutely demoed. And that's when the guy realized that his henchman and his big, tough, bully guy just wasn't going to work out. So you better fly right, figure something else out. Anyways, Caruso played that role where, no, I'm good to go, man. I'm good to go. So I, I love this choice. I love this choice. Oh, well, there you Zamboni. go. Zamboni boy for this week. Our pre-Christmas uh, Zamboni boy is David Caruso. Perfect. All right. Hey, we're back. We are back, and we are going to close out this uh, this show. Yeah. Okay. We're going to close it out with a This Week in Hockey History. Right. Okay. Hello, Canada. Lafleur coming out rather gingerly. Back to Lafleur. The Bonsi shoots. He scores. This Week in Hockey History. So, Liam... Uh, it being the week before Christmas, yeah, right? uh, there's a lot of like a lot of things happen before Christmas. Like I remember, yes. w- was it Christmas Eve? Now are we? Does Christmas Eve fall into this category? It does, and I, you know, the, the thing, Chris, is the last couple of weeks I'm having a tough time because, and this is me saying it because I, 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 well, I we could we could be like here's the thing: if you use everything this year, what the fuck are we going to use next year? Well, and and it'd be impossible to use everything, and. You know, and I'm saying I'm having a tough time only because I don't want to. I don't want to drag it on. I don't want people to be bored. I'm trying to find a couple things that are key, and yeah. I'm basically what I'm doing because we tape typically on Mondays. You typically post on Wednesdays. Yeah. And I'm trying not to go, you know, too far beyond somewhere in the Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Right. Uh, you know, in oh in, within that time. Frame. Yeah, within yeah, the time frame. Yeah, but by the time people see it, it's later on in the week. I I, I know, but I've, yeah. I I I mean, listen. There were NHL games played uh, on on Christmas Day, for example, uh, which is it's Christmas Day a week from today, as we tape right now. Let me get this straight. It's okay. a week today. Yeah. yeah, and and so it's a week from today. A week from today. Yeah. So th- so yeah. So there the twenty fourth counts. Absolutely, it does. Yeah. And there were NHL games played on on on, on Christmas Eve, on Christmas Day, on New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day. It was a regular thing up until yeah. the 1970s. 
Well, you know, in the early 1970s. But, but I remember at Christmas Eve games, uh, and certainly New Year's Eve games, it was a, well, an important New Year's yeah, Eve New, game. New Year's Eve is a different yeah. story altogether. Everybody's going to remember December 31, 75 will stand the test yeah. of time, you know. Ice was tilted, three all tied, doesn't matter, we'll get there next show, yeah. or the show after, I forget, but uh, where it's going to fit in date-wise, but uh, I guess it'd be, yeah, the one after. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out, but anyway, that's that was another, that was a great game, uh, we just didn't happen to win it, we totally dominated, we had a, the Habs had to played that team, that was a bolstered club team, Red Army team, picked up like four guys from the national team, we still had stop shot them, 38-13, like, give me a break. They didn't even need the Sam Boney down in Montreal's hand for 40 minutes. Anyway, it's a great game because of the action the Habs are providing. That's another story for another time. But December 19th is, does fall into okay. yes, our, does our fall category. In. And uh, I just, that, the, I, one of our previous this day in hockey was when the NHL was formed. Right. I had the date when the NHL was formed. This December 19th, as people will see it now, if you post on Wednesday, it'll be yesterday, but when they're seeing it, this, whenever. <laughs> It'll be that's when the NHL actually played their first games. Okay, Dep oh, December nineteenth, really? nineteen seventeen. So I thought I thought that was that was pretty cool to have uh, in there. Uh, they there were two games opening night. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Ottawa Senators seven to four, and a team called the Montreal Wanderers who only lasted for four games because their rink burnt down and they had to fold. They beat a team called the Toronto Arenas who actually went on to that's win the great. Stanley Cup that year, ten to nine. So it was a five-goal game in each game for the Habs, Joe Malone, for the Wanderers, Harry Highland. But Dave Ritchie scored one minute into the Wanderers-Toronto game, and that is the first goal in NHL history Oh, bro. Okay. on December so 19, 1917. There, that is notable. I thought so, too. Dave Ritchie. Dave Ritchie. Yeah, like and, as in uh, Ritchie Feed and Seed? Well, Ritchie? the same spelling. Yeah. But, uh, and, and Dave Ritchie, of the original teams that were in the NHL, the Montreal Canadiens, the Montreal Wanderers, the Quebec Bulldogs, the, the Ottawa Senators, and the Toronto Arenas. Dave Ritchie played for all of them. Oh, he, really? He had, a, he had a journeyman career, which a lot of guys did in those yeah. days. But, I mean, he bounced around. But he does have the distinction of the first ever goal in NHL history. I did a gig. I, I forget where it was. But it was earlier this calendar year in 2023. And, and uh, you know what? It was at Rideau View. It was at Rideau View at our at our, your, at our your, member your guest, guest. Okay. and and I did trivia on day two there. I think you had left because you played the second yeah. day, and a kid says to me, "Who scored?" The, like he was he was 30, 35. Yeah. and he said, "Who's do you know? You would not know who scored the first goal in NHL history." I said, "Yeah, December 19, 1917, Dave Ritchie, Montreal Wanderers against Toronto. Uh, they had, Toronto actually used two goalies in that game. First time, uh, uh, of course, it would be the first time it happened. It was the first time, first yeah. game in the NHL, and he said." That was my grandfather. I said, you're freaking kidding me? You're really? kidding me? You got Dave Ritchie's grandson sitting in front of me and he scored the first goal in the NHL. I couldn't freaking believe it. Anyway, the only other one was December 17th. I wanted to give a shout out to the Ranger fans. I know I got a bunch of buddies of mine that watch. Okay. It's actually uh, Lee McKenna out east in Prince Edward Island. Big Ranger fan. December 17th, 35. I just love this stat. The New York Rangers honored five guys who were there on opening night in 1926. And nine years later, on December 17, 1935, they all played their 500th game, which was... The same, the same group. Same group of five guys. Bill and Bun Cook, Frank Boucher, Ching Johnson, Ivan Ching Johnson, and Murray Murdoch, who went on to play 508 consecutive games, which was a record until broken by Andy Hebbeton, which, which held the record until broken by Johnny games. Wilson who had the record till it was broken by Gary Unger, who had the record till it was broken by Doug Jarvis, who had the record till it was broken by Keith Yandel, who had the record till it was broken by Phil Kessel. I digress. So five guys, same night, December 17, 35, New York Rangers. Lee, that's for you, buddy, and all my other Ranger fans uh, out there who you may be. I know it was a million years ago, but it's a cool stat nonetheless. It is a very cool And stat. Bill and Bun Cook, Frank Boucher, like you're talking Hall of Famers here. Ching Johnson, hell of a defenseman. Oh, Ivan Ching Johnson. Stay, these guys were Stanley Cup winners, 1928, 1933. They were excellent hockey players. Murray, actually, ironically, was the worst of the bunch. Well, not fair to say it that way. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the least talented of the bunch. And he ended up playing the, the consecutive, he had the one of the consecutive game record. But they all played their 500, all for the Rangers, all on the same night. 
That's pretty cool. Yeah. That is, so there you go. That is that is. That's this day. You in know hockey. what? That's this day in hockey in 1935. Yeah. Or this week in hockey. Yeah. In 1935 and 19, 1917. And respect. 1917. Oh. Respect. And Wayne Gretzky, December uh, 19, 1984, got his 1,000 point in career game number 424. Blew mm-hmm. away the previous record held by Gila Fleur, 720 games. You know who has the second fastest 1,000 points? This, this, folks, is why... Second fastest... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a trick, it's, a it's a trick question. It's a oh, trick really? question. Yeah. It's a trick question. Because the answer is Wayne. Oh, because he's the next fastest. He's also the fastest... The second fastest. He did the first 1,000 points in 424 games. He scored his next 1,000 points in 433 games. Mario Lemieux, by the way, in case you're wondering, 513 games. Which is still liquid grease lightning fast, but it ain't Wayne, man. No. And Wayne did. Wayne enjoyed doing it so much. He did it for an encore nine games later. Yeah. Like, give me a break. Give you me a what? break. You got. I, I'll tell you. Now, I think we are seeing, and I to, to digress, but I think we are seeing in Connor McDavid a a guy who doesn't have the doesn't have the vision, the same vision that Gretzky did. Like, I don't. Gretzky is an anomaly. Okay. Gretzky's an anomaly. He's yeah. absolutely an anomaly. Yeah. But I, I don't, an anomaly, I don't yeah. think that um, I think what excuse me what we're seeing in Connor McDavid is the next greatness. Yeah, by far. Yeah. Like I don't think I think he's better than Lemieux. I think he's I think he's almost as good as Gretzky. It, only time will tell. He doesn't set up quite like Gretzky does. It, it, Gretzky it, had this ability. And, and you know what? I love... The thing about... I saw Gretzky play in the Sioux. Yep. Okay. I saw him when he played for the Sioux against Ottawa. Okay. So, so I, I saw the same time period. So we were going... And my dad was on the road at the time. Okay. okay. And, he, and he took me. Uh, and we went to the Sioux to see a game. And we stopped in this place called Iron Bridge. Okay. okay? Uh, on Highway 7. Is that a town? Yeah. It's a little town. Cool. Okay. Just outside of the Sioux. Okay. We stopped in Iron Bridge and... So I'm excited to go see this game, and I'm going to go see Gretzky because he was the guy that everyone was talking about, and blah, 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 blah. And so the guy who was working the store that my dad was selling to starts telling me about Gretzky. Ah, he's no good. He does, you know what I mean? He's this and that. He doesn't, and I'm like, oh, really? I thought, I, ah, it's all, you're just hearing all this stuff, you know? So I was like, oh, okay. So I'm kind of like going to the game a lot. I'm kind of deflated. I go to the game. I think Gretzky got six goals, right? <laughs> and one of the things that I found really interesting, though, know, Gretzky always let the puck go not here, but back here. Like, if you ever see his release, it's a different release than other guys. You watch guys release the puck; it's up here, right? Like it's coming, it's coming off. Hey, he certainly it's, didn't have McDavid's release. Not that McDavid's is even what Connor Bedard's is right now, but they're just so two different. Oh yeah, no, no, a different player. But he he was a different t- and the timing and everything. Yeah, it was it was like an off speed, whatever it yeah. was. All I know was he got like six goals that night. I went away impressed, thinking the guy from Iron Bridge would didn't know what disaster. Yeah, you which know. was a lot of guys. You know I mean? A lot of guys thought they were thought they were, they wanted to be the guy to say that Wayne was going to fail all the way along. And it's not that I said that, but I certainly had reservations about him coming to the NHL. I totally dismissed the WHA in its existence, and I, I feel bad about that, but I was a kid. I was in my teens. I was going to high school, St. Pius. I, I just totally disrespected yeah. the WHA. It was a lesser yeah. league, I felt, and I believe it was. I still believe that. I now I believe that historically to this day, but having said that, I dismissed what Wayne did as an 18-year-old in that league, you know, which right. was score 46 goals, 110 points, and win the Rookie of the Year, finish third in scoring, uh, 17 turning 18. He turned 18 that January. And then he comes to the NHL, and of course records 137 points. They don't. But get but, but he doesn't trophy. doesn't get the Calder Trophy. Yeah, because, total bullshit. Because Marcel Dion scored one more goal. No, that was the Art Ross. They, oh, the Art they Ross. didn't give him the Art Ross, but they didn't give him the Calder because they deemed the WHA oh, to that's be right. a pro league. Pro league. That's right. And yeah. That's mean, right. Meanwhile, the next year, Peter Stashny is winning it at 26 years of age after playing eight years for, for the Czech national team. Right. Give me a break. What a load of shit. What a total load of shit that was, but uh, you know they can't they can't go back though they can't go back and change it. No, I know. So you know, I so Wayne said, done. okay, you won't give me the Calder and I'll, I'll take care of everything else. else. It's like uh, <laughs> it's like Ov beating out Crosby and uh, doing handstands and everything. Oh, I got the Calder. He'd, no, he'd never be able to take that away from me. 
Well, it took, he took everything else away from you, including your heart internationally. And, and, uh, and, and in fact, took you right out of a gold medal game in the World Juniors with a hit at the blue line of all guys. It was Crosby who knocked him out with that body check. Wayne or uh, Ovi with the Darth Vader, the Darth Vader visor yeah. on, sitting on the bench by himself. Anyway, I'm a fan of the guy now. However, he's on pace for 16 goals, and and he's, he's gone, not he's not he's not he's not going to make the record. He's got 13 yeah. 13 without a goal, Chris. 13 yeah, games without he's a goal. Not, he's old, like and you know what? There there is a time, and you know it's funny. This is my last year playing in the Monday Night League. Oh yeah, yeah. It's my time. It's yeah. my time to go. Yeah. I'm still scoring, yeah. uh, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a force. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And when you're not, you you know what I mean. Not only am I a force, I'm. I, I think I'm shitty. Really. At the end of the day, I'm not. You know. And I don't want to be the worst. Probably guy. being too harsh on yourself is my you know, guess. But uh, but but I. I but you're saying it. Right? But this is my last. Year. Guys are flying. Like guys are 38 years old playing in this, and they're flying. And I'm like I'm pushing 60. Yeah, and and it's like, yeah, I think I'm, uh, you know, yeah, um, I'm done. I right? remember leaving the Sunday night league at 37 years of age and realizing there's just no way. Yeah, I, I couldn't, uh, I, I just couldn't keep up anymore. Yeah, okay, so, so. Um, but all that being said, uh, I will be going tonight, and I'll be heading to the pub right after. Awesome. Okay, which is why I play. Okay. okay. I and expect a text from you guys then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah be Bubba. Safe. Yeah, yeah. He'll be in there. He's, He's a beauty. Spot. He's yeah. a beauty. Oh yeah. You know. You know what? I, I gotta say this because I hear he's got one penalty all year. That's yeah. It. So this is the funny thing, I, and, and I this probably I won't. Maybe this will make it. I don't know. Whatever. So I didn't know the guy, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I've only heard, yeah, about his carnage. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've only heard about this guy. Then I meet the guy. He's the most soft-spoken, like politest, intellectual guy that you'll ever meet. Like I he's know. like the guy's the guy's a, a gem of a human being, and it's like I can't imagine <laughs> all these things that I hear about him, right? Like I know the stuff that's said about me, and and, and a lot of that is exaggerated as well. Okay, sure. all right. Yeah. But, but I get the same thing. You know what I mean? But at the yeah. same time, it's like See if I can like, sit down and drink twenty pints. I mean, come on. Yeah. All Go right. ahead. As, as, as if. Okay. Yeah. That, I've never seen that happen. Um, but but no. I, I like. I, I honestly. I, I was very very uh, shocked by the fact that he is not at all what I expected. Yeah. I. You know what I mean. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, super super nice guy. He is. And yeah. and you know what? Conscientious. And he's got it. Like, have you seen his shot? I have this well, shot. I, I remember from back okay. in the day. So, so he's got this shot, right? Yeah. Well, he keeps it low because yeah. he doesn't like. He, yeah. He's actually that very thing comes considerate. up and hits you with elbow pads or in the well, gut or something. You well, know. well, no, but but he keeps it so that he's not going to hurt anybody. Yeah. Right, and that's conscientious and caring about the guys you're playing. Sure. With, sure. Right. And I mean, and he's uh, he's younger than us, though, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, he's a '68 birth, so okay, so he's yeah. a few years younger than me, yeah. but. Not not crazy, yeah. but he's I mean still one of the older guys in our league, probably right. Yeah, because yeah. these are all like, yeah, most I mean, of the kids he's, are he's, like forty. He's fifty. He's fifty five. Yeah. So there you have it. Anyhow, yeah. uh, I don't know how we still got talking about that. Screw but him, man. Tell you. Oh no no no! Yeah. He's got big hands. Eh? Yeah. You know, big 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 big. Oh, cement. Six four two forty. It's still a force, man. That's still a force. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. But he, you know, let's say he he yeah, he knows his hockey too, eh? Oh yeah. yeah, no, he's a passionate I mean? hockey fan, yeah. passionate Bruin fan, and and uh, and and very very knowledgeable hockey fan. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, he, he had two and a half years playing pro, and and, and he, he coached. I, know, I didn't know he coached. Campbell. Coach Coach Campbell. He was yeah. fir first Campbell coach to get him in the playoffs. Yeah, first there guy to get him in the playoffs. And so. so the guy, the guy, the guy knows the game. He knows yeah. the game absolutely. All right, all right. That's it. We would like to wish you, our loyal fan, our legions of fans. And not just the guys at the Legion, but our legions of fans. Them too, though. Like a Manatec, what is it, 450? South Carlton Legion Branch 314. <laughs> more more uh, informally known as the Manatec Legion. Okay, there you go. It's, yeah, you do the number. Uh, we would like to wish you guys a very Merry Christmas. Honest to God, uh, we hope that all of your dreams come true on Christmas morning. You open up that hockey net or, there you go. or, or that stick yeah. or whatever you get for Christmas morning, okay? 
Uh, we hope that you get it and it's wonderful. We'll see you. We're going to be broadcasting not on Christmas Day, though. I'm sorry. No. But we'll be into the, uh, during the J World Juniors. World Juniors, time. yeah. We'll, we'll do a broadcast then. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of, uh, of our sponsor, uh, Hosey yeah. Brown. Any Hosey and here? Brown. Hosey and Brown. Uh, a redneck lager. And, <coughs> uh, and, and, and us. Uh, I'm Haas. I'm McGuire. Thanks for watching. G'day. Ha <laughs>